actually read a CSS specification. Uh, I hang out there all the time. So let's have, let's have context. So actually, I help out at this website called Code Drops. So they have this CSS reference where they you know want to explain like all the different CSS properties. So the latest uh, entry I took on was grid. So grid, I was like, oh, okay, I'll just learn about grid and then write about it. Well, that, uh, so that was one month ago. So, um, so I realized that grid was massive. So of course, to write this sort of entry, I would like actually go and look at the spec. And I thought, what? I, I read the, the, the most of the spec was written pretty much plain English. It was pretty good. There were examples. There were use cases. And then you got to the actual syntax. And I was like, I don't understand this. Okay, let's let I let you see what I mean. So, this is the grid layout module. It's 86 pages long, you try to print it out, FYI. <laughs> so, okay, it's nice, it has like diagrams and things, right? But then it, it will go into the actual, so you see, this is how, uh, in the, they will highlight it in blue, the property and the value and some bit, the properties of the value is a standard format. So you say, oh, okay, grid template columns, this property can potentially have three values. It could be none, it could be tracklist, it could be auto tracklist. And then you look at what auto tracklist is, and then it's like, where? So it becomes like this, and then you see all these funny symbols. I will zoom, I cannot zoom, okay. So you're like, oh, there's angle brackets, there are question marks, there's all kinds of funny things. What on earth does this even mean? I, I stared at this for the better part of two days before I actually got it. Because to be okay, to be fair, grid is one of the more complicated properties. That's why it's it take this is the only way that they could present it in a in a sort of a text form. I mean, I'm sure if you had some da data visualization people, they probably would sometimes say, Oh, I click this and it expand and then you like click this and then you explain what it is, but sorry this is the text document, so I think this is the best they could do. So I decided that I needed to learn how to read this syntax. So because turns out it's a, it's a thing, it's a thing. It's called Bacchus Nor form. Yeah, so what is Bacchus Nor form? I'm pronouncing it wrong. So naturally it was introduced by two people called John Bacchus and Peter Nor. And always name things after yourself, guys. <laughs> so what it is, officially it's a, it's a context-free notation method to describe the syntax of a language. So it, it's just basically a language to describe a language. It's like very meta. So the CSS property value is loosely based on BNF. Uh, BNF apparently is, is really common in, is commonly used by almost all programming languages to describe itself. I'm not a comp science major, so somebody can like correct me on this, but apparently this is true. And it's, it's, it's like you use it uh, to actually build compilers. Okay, okay. Use it to build compilers, he said. So, Basically, it looks like this. This is the general pattern, which means the stuff on the left can be replaced by the stuff on the right. That's what I understood. So I got this analogy from um, a, this year is six, a 16-year-old a list of part article called How to Read the CSS Spec. But I thought this was a very nice analogy. So he describes how a sandwich is made in English. So this really long paragraph describing a, a sandwich, it can, be trans it can be written in BNF like so. So they, each of these symbols have a meaning. So it's like whether it's optional, whether there's a fixed number of uh, parameters you can have. So each of these symbols have meaning. So I'm just going <coughs> to briefly talk about all these. So hopefully by the end of this, when you, when you try to read a CSS spec one day, you won't be as confused as I was when I started. So that's the 16-year-old article, written 16 years ago but still relevant today. So there are, there are four types of component values you will encounter for the CSS. So this is not BNF anymore, this is uh, relevant to the CSS spec itself. So first one is keyword values, I think most of us will be very familiar with this. So it's things, the, the, whatever it is, is you can use it directly in your code. So take uh, words like auto, words like none, or the CSS colors, for example, these are keyword values. So on the spec, it will be as is. So there, there will be no punctuation marks around it. It's just as is, you can just use it like that. Another type is data, uh, basic data types. So this will be surrounded by angle brackets. So when you read the spec, it could be a uh, new link. Maybe width, then it will be angle brackets length. So it means that uh, you, you replace it with an actual value. 
So, so this is also pretty straightforward. Then there's another type called the property data type, whereby because the spec is usually for shorthands, so they're trying to reference, they don't want to reprint, uh, repeat whatever they explained previously. So for example, um, let's talk about background, um, okay, this one, let's use this one. Grid template rows is, uh, is, a, is a property, but there's a shorthand that is called grid template that utilizes, so it's, it's a combination of grid template rows, grid template columns, so they refer it in this manner. So they will angle bracket and then they will have a code mark there to, to tell you that this, you refer to that original, original spec. And then there's a non-property uh, non data type. So this, the, the difference between this and the one I talked about previously is that it's not actually an actual CSS value that you write in your code, but it's referenced somewhere in the whole specification document. So if you, these two examples come from the grid spec, line names and track repeat. They themselves, they are not CSS properties, but they, are, they make up another line of, of actual values. So it's like a reference because the entire line is too long. So they sort of like just make it, think of it as a variable. So the variable here is line name. So you want to see the, the value of the entire thing. You, they, the whole thing is hyperlinked, so you can click to go, go there. So that's the four different component value types. How do you differentiate between the second and the fourth? Second and the fourth. Because they all just have angle brackets. Yeah, that uh, from a syntactually there is no there's is, there's no difference, but basically what it it will not have. Okay, so if you look at the CSS spec, right? I will go here. For actual values, they will have a. They will have an explicit this 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 sort of format, but if it's let's go in line names. So this one you will not have a actual explanatory a dedicated explanatory section to it. It's more of like it's used as a reference for something else. Because I think my experience is mostly with grid, this grid spec is that. There are, too many, there are too many properties to show in like one single chunk, so they just chose to break it up. And when they break it up, they sort of just like make each of these a variable that they can refer to. So it's more of like a reference point. But if it's an actual value that you can use, they actually give some, they dedicate a short explanatory lines to it. As in, that's my experience so far. So by heart. What? By heart. <laughs> Okay, that's also that the works. natural language method of doing this. Yeah. You better know. They're basically grouped together <laughs> because you can only have one of those things, and that's how they do it. It's completely arbitrary. Could we anything? That's how you say measure your WPC workings. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So then we have component value combinators. So we can start talking about the symbols. So uh, the first one is the one that quite straightforward. So if the example looks like this, then all the values must occur in that same order. So if it's a space separated list of values, if it appears value one, value two, you have to use it. Value one, value two, you cannot swap it around. So that's, that's pretty common. And then we have the double ampersand. So for double ampersand, all the values, so if there are two values, all, both of them must be present, but you can swap them around. It's fine. So it, an example I can think of is for for grid uh, grid row the grid row property. Uh, it, there is a span keyword and then there is an integer and then a name line an optional name line. You can swap so it can be span two or it can be two span. It's fine. So so that's the, that, that's the type where um, the order doesn't matter. Like the background the background shorthand the order doesn't really matter. Also so you can no repeat and then. Uh, I don't know, position uh, in whichever order you so choose. So that's a double percent and what is it called? It's a pipe. Uh, so if it's a pipe, only one value. So if value one, two, three, so pipe is all. I think most of us are familiar with this, so pipe is all. Double pipe is at least one, uh, you can have more, order doesn't matter. So yeah. Uh, and then there's the angle bracket. So it's like resolving values in mats. So you pick, you do the, you do whatever is in the bracket first. So you 
for this particular example, it's uh, value 1 or value 2, so you pick 1 first and then value 3. So the angle bracket just means that it's a, it's a group, it's a group. I'm thinking of mean square bracket. Just oh, oh, sorry, mistake. sorry, yes, 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 I meant square bracket, sorry, misspoke. Uh, okay, then we have this, component value multipliers. So again, it's, it's kind of like shorthand. So first one is a question mark. Question mark means it's optional. So you have, also can, don't have, also never mind. Uh, usually how it, it works is they will sort of put it uh, for some values that because the there are two ways you can set two types of separators you use is either comma or space right so if it has a comma the comma actually goes inside the angle brackets and then they will question mark it at the bottom so it makes sense syntactically because if the, the value is optional it's not there the comma doesn't so the comma is actually linked to the value fine don't get confused yeah. question mark just means optional yeah. yes yeah. Ah yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah, chinchai is a good way of putting it. Question mark. Then there is asterisk. So asterisk again is not the difference between this and question mark is instead of what zero or one is zero or many. Uh, but again the, the separator here is a comma. So yes. I have a question that might be premature, but isn't all of this basically directed at the people writing the CSS compilers? rather than the ones writing code? No, because if you want to reference the spec to, to actually know what you can or cannot use, a user would, might al would also refer to the spec, because... I'm thinking of the primary audience, though, because if I was writing a compiler for this, that's perfect. Yes, you are absolutely right. The spec, the purpose of the spec is actually for browser implementers to, to implement standardize the way that they implement features. Uh, for the rest of us, because the way, I know I'm, I'm focusing on a very specific aspect of the specification, but the rest of the specification, I found exceptionally useful when I was trying to learn about grid, is all, they have include, they include a lot of use cases. I think one of the requirements when they actually come up with the specification is actually, they are, you are encouraged to have actual real example and use cases inside to illustrate what you're trying to achieve. And that actually helps me as a normal just web developer in, to understand how the spec actually works, uh, so how the property actually works. So yes, uh, and, and since I'm there, I might as well see how the syntax is written and then that's like really confused. Less confused I would put it differently. I mean, in theory, it's for compiler writers, mm -hmm. but given the timeline and it appears in May, most developers will, will try to read it anyway because you will not have tutorials by by tomorrow, yeah. Yeah. Or if you will have, you may be better ones. Also, if MDN is not good enough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you take examples of like that CSS3, where yeah, so the technology moves fast and yeah, 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 yeah. you are a writer almost, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you're a pioneer in that way. But even CSS great Rachel Andrew, who's been so influential, at least with tracking and uh, directing some of the spec, has a really extensive how to use the grid site. Like, if she thought this was enough, then she wouldn't be doing anything further. So one thing about the specification, I'm going to veer for the tension here. The specification, yes, the audience is, I would think, for browser implementers, but normal developers like you and I, we can contribute by actually going through the spec and uh, raising issues, because I would think that the people who are actually implementing the browsers mean are, are probably are, they are writing browser code. They're not writing web code. But what they need is input from people who will actually be using the using these properties in production sites to give feedback on whether hey does this make sense? If we implement it this way, um, is this how you guys would expect to use it? I want to highlight an ex extremely relevant example. Uh, when you be, when when grid comes up and we start using it, there will be a CSS property in there called grid gap, which essentially allows you to set gutters between your grid items. This was not included in the spec for the longest time, but as Chris mentioned, Rachel Andrew is very involved with grid spec. Anyway, she's been involved with the grid spec longer than I have been a web developer, and she was the one who pushed to have this gutter property. So. She, I think it was a meetup. She met up with one of the spec writers. Uh, she's AKA Fantasy. She's uh, her real name is Elika Etimat. I think I'm ruining it. So 
she raised this, she pushed it, and both her and Pep Atkins actually wrote it into the spec for the next iteration. So normal developers can make a difference to the spec and to how features are actually implemented in browsers. I think maybe a lot of people are not aware that this is possible. So I think it's necessary to make this more well known. This is how they are going to make. There you go. If you want to get into MIT, um, maybe contribute to the CSS stack. I don't know. Yeah. Suggestion. Like frequent contributors are invited, like an invited expert, to the working groups, <coughs> and you can contribute more. Yeah. <coughs> they have super influence, and that's a good practice. So you don't only have to be a consumer. You can actually contribute your your input to how browsers. What, how the internet works. So it's like your little dent on the internet universe. The good thing is the barrier is your interest. Yes, you must care about it, then you can do it. Like. Yeah, then there, there are no more specifications that are close like 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. understanding everything is in you. Understanding this is also quite interesting because I think most people look at the spec and like, oh, <laughs> so technical. Yeah, but uh, actually, yeah. I must say that they seem to be more and more readable with each year. I agree. But, like, but I, Mm -hmm. I learned, I think, XSLT from spec, and oh. the CSS version 1 from the spec. Mm -hmm. And the today's specs, okay, they are larger. Yeah. But, but they are more readable. Yeah. Yeah. More examples. Okay, I'll, I'll quickly move on so we can get to more fun stuff. Uh, so, okay, another, another symbol that you'll encounter is the plus sign. Uh, plus sign means one or many, but they are, they are space separated, not comma separated. There you go. And then there will be curly braces. So these are for values like my favorite that, uh, property when I try to explain it to people who are completely new to CSS is the margin and padding property. Because they tell them, well, it can take one value. It can also take two values. It can take three and also four. But they mean different things when you use them in different combinations. Then they just look at me like I spoke Greek to them. So um, in the spec, it's written this way. There are, there are several ways that, that you can define this. So if it's just a single value is definitive, you have to have two values. But if you have uh, two values, then it's a range, so it's between x and y. I like this because it's just an excuse for me to use the x and y symbols. These, these are actual HTML entities that look like high school algebra. Love it. So in this example, if it's like one common three, then you can use one, two, or three. So it's a range. And then, because CSS is so flexible, there's also the no maximum limit option. <laughs> So, uh, let me think. I can't even think of a property off the top of my head that, that this applies to, but rest assured that it exists. Uh, one more is hash. Hash is very similar to something that I mentioned previously, except that now the separator is a comma instead of a space. Yeah, even I can't remember. That's for sure. Yes, or we, will get, we will get to that. Um, you can use that. Unlimited one with linear gradients, we can stack on full gradients. Correct. So, uh, okay. So this is the last one. Um, this one just indicates that uh, one of the values is compulsory. So, like, exclamation mark. Looks like important. So, combination max. What we're going to talk about is box shadow. So this is how it innocuously looks like in the stack. It can be either none or a shadow. <laughs> Hash. Which actually means this. So if we have, uh, based on the knowledge that we have learned from everything I said just now, what this actually means is that all three values, so inset, length, and color, must occur because of the double emphasis by any order. So that's fine. Inset is optional because of the question mark. At least two length values at most four because of the range. And color value is optional. Plus, don't forget that the original <coughs> one has a hash, so the entire set can occur multiple times. Comma Sorry? The default color. Wouldn't the current color? Uh, default, yeah, it depends on the browser. Uh, the def for example, for... Yeah, really, it depends what on the browser. Is the um, is, is so you need to use a normalized CSS. Yeah. Uh, color is browser dependent. Uh, so I think for so most it's black, it may or may not be black. Yeah. So that's box shadow. Next, background. So in a stack, it also innocuously looks like it only got two values. It's a background somehow. But it actually means this. Nice. 
So actually what it means, so it's, like, it's shorthand. So shorthands are usually very tricky. So you will encounter most of these symbols when you get to shorthand properties. So grid is this massive shorthand that I may ex we may explain in potentially going to happen CSS grid workshop somewhere in the future. <laughs> um, so when we use the background proper, actually uh, I read this from uh, a guy called Harry Roberts, he's like this CSS consultant. He actually mentioned that try not to use shorthands because what happens when you use a shorthand is that based on how uh, the spec is written, for example, for, for most shorthands, when you use a shorthand and you don't explicitly uh, specify every single one, those that you did not specify get reset, uh, get reset to their initial values. So for example, if I had set um, background color on somewhere above and then I use the background property, it actually will reset if I didn't explicitly uh, sort of redefine it again. So unless you're really sure that's what you want, use the individual properties. So that was his recommendation. I, I think that's quite true because when I do grid, I also don't use a shorthand. I mean, it's really it's a really smart implementation, but it's you tend you may or may not miss even if because I'm quite familiar with it now. I will still miss out that what oh one of these I did not set explicitly got reset to its initial value and I didn't really notice and then screwed up my grid. So that's just a suggestion. Um, so basically you have image, position, repeat, style, attachment, order doesn't matter. Whether you have them or not is also up to you. So as Thomas said, the Singaporean term for this is called chi chai. So at least one value must occur, the rest can OTOT. OTOT stands for on time, on target. So if you have you are Singaporean and you have gone to the army, this is a phrase that's commonly used in the army to say on your own time. OTOT. So at least one value, the rest can OTOT. Uh, I'm still talking about hierarchy. Um, if Doug Crawford was here recently talking about JavaScript stuff. One of the things that he preaches um, is clarity in JavaScript code. There's a lot of shortcuts in JavaScript that don't exist in other languages, some do. Um, but his point is basically you don't use them because it's so much easier to read what's going on. Okay. So if you use background shortcut, if you just say background color, you can see right away what's going on. You don't have to Fair guess. Point. Even if you're the only person looking at the code, it just makes it a whole lot clearer. Explicit programming and could do work on this all. Some might be like R range and explicit. Better to be clear than be clever. Change your variable yes. Yes, the swear words. So in this case, for position, you can the background size is optional because of the question mark. And then the entire set for the background layer can occur multiple times, comma separated. But only the final background layer can have background color. So that's that's what you infer from all this symbology. So the last property is oh look. Greek template colors and rows. Again, innocuously looks like there are only three values. Actually, is this. So I'm not going to go through this because I'm just throwing it. Yes. <laughs> we can talk about this another day. So the, the, there was this old fashioned way of presenting BNF diagrams as charts. Oh. Just to make it easier to read. So, so data visualization for BNF. In this case. I'm, I was looking at. So, um, because I got sidetracked while trying to write my great article, uh, I made a cheat sheet, dish kind of thing. And uh, while I was here, I decided to explore something called print styles. So, technically, uh, yeah. sure. how do I preview? But actually. Just video. You can just make it Oh, okay. Let's try. No. <laughs> print. But okay, if you, really wanted, <laughs> if you really wanted to, you can. You can just uh, do print again and then just say, yeah, yeah. sure. Bottom yeah. left. PDF. Also, you say that. Open PDF in preview. <laughs> is that how it works? No, I don't think that's. Sorry, this is my laptop. So Oops. Uh, okay, okay, okay. So, so it's like kind of semi optimized for print if you like really feel that you want it on your wall. It's you can. All the other stuff is gone and just the values are there and the nice. table. Form. You can turn off a lot of those things too, but still like, you've got the URL and, and the like. I think you can get rid of all of that. But I, I cannot control it from CSS. Uh, the margin is your printer option. 
Sun no, Dials you can. You've got oh, the Sun Dials, yeah. Oh, okay. At least in Firefox. The last time I did this, there's yeah, Firefox too. Ah, okay. Easier yeah, Firefox. Chrome Good to know. I will investigate that and remove the margins. Early so in the early 2000s, you could control that stuff here. I uh, and, um, okay, so okay. That's and, and great. Whenever you order the red margin, you get this like, printouts of your order. And that's why I removed them, because it's five months printing. I see. <laughs> Good to know. So, how do I go back? I'm lost. <laughs> Which browser are we on? on? Safari. We oh. want to figure it's Safari. Which tab set? <laughs> there you go. So, cheat cheat, if anybody's interested, QR code, because I like QR codes and I'm Chinese. I think QR codes are a Chinese thing. Okay, wait, that's, that's, that's wrong. Um, yeah, so that's, that's me. Uh, so, all the relevant things, articles, and references, if you ever decide to start reading CSS specs, all very useful articles. That's it. So that was Ross Wickley's article. Moving on. Yeah, yeah that Ross Wickley's article is the Smashing Magazine one that came out last year. Okay. Okay, moving on. We have Zell who's going to talk to us about design principles and typography. Isn't it great when your host is also the speaker? Anyway, come on, come on. <laughs> 